What up? It's Jimmy from Odds.com. This is a clip from our big NCAA basketball show. Hit the link at the bottom of the screen. It's available exclusively on Odds.com. That's to check out the entire show. Jacksonville State Gamecocks. They owe us money, Max. 10 and 7, 6 and 5 in conference at UT Martin Skyhawks. 5 and 10, 3 and 8 in conference. We're at Skyhawk Arena in Martin, Tennessee. We have. Jacksonville State opening up as 10-point favorites. There's one, there's two books that have a hook on it at 10 and a half. This total opened up at 139. We now see 140s and 140 and a half. Jacksonville State has lost two straight. They're coming off a tough 86-82 overtime loss at home to Eastern Kentucky on Tuesday night. They were up eight points with five minutes and 13 seconds left in the game and then went scoreless for four minutes and 55 seconds. They were led by senior Kane Henry, who went for 22 points, six boards. Big bump from the 6.4 points he averages on the season. Guard Jalen Finch also had a big night, 19.7 boards. They have three players averaging double digits, and Darian Adams at 14 and a half. The aforementioned Jalen Finch and six foot ten senior center Brandon Huffman, who averages 10.4. They score 74.5 points per game. They hit 46% from the field, 35.5% from three, and 70.1% from the foul line. UT Martin had their two-game winning streak snapped in a 76-60 loss to SIU Edwardsville on Saturday night. They once again struggled with their shot, hitting just 34.8% from the field. 16.7% from three. This is a reoccurring theme for this team. They shoot just 38.6% from the field on the season. They're led by junior Cameron Holden, who's coming off a very tough night for SIU Edwardsville. He was in foul trouble. He went just two for six from the field for five points. He's played, UT Martin's played 15 games. He's played 13 games. And it was just the second time this year where he didn't hit double digits. He averages 16.1 points, eight rebounds on the season. He's probably chomping at the bit to get back out there. But will it be enough against the Gamecocks, Max? Take it away. Yeah, he may be chomping at the bit to get out there, but it ain't going to do nothing except bring him some more sorrow. Listen, when Cam Holden has a good game for this UT Martin team, it's usually with him having the ball in his hand a lot, taking control of a lot of possessions, and taking that many more shots. So as great as he is at crashing the offensive glass off his misses and then being able to create a steal for a transition opportunity for him to score, I think you're starting to see the theme of how I view this guy. And he's about stacking his numbers up and not necessarily playing good system basketball. I think that with this UT Martin team, yeah, they want on two games, but sometimes a blind man finds his goddamn cereal and the milk as well. So I think that with UT Martin, they're going to be playing a Jacksonville State team that, from a talent perspective, has the advantage. The only problems are they need to learn how to play 40 fucking minutes. You know, when you blow leads like that, obviously the next time out, it's going to freaking spark my radar because I'm going to be like, whoa, it's a rebound situational spot. It's a big number for them to rebound in a situational spot. But I do think that if they can guard the three-point line and bully UT Martin on the offensive glass, you definitely have enough size to do that with Hoffman, Martin, Rube, uh, Nugamazi, whatever. You got a whole bunch of guys that are pretty stout. And with Ajani Kennedy, you got to take it at him. You got to take it at him early because – He's the most serviceable front court player that they have. Other than freshman Anthony Thomas, who's been quite the sensation and the three level scorer, I don't fear this UT Martin team. I don't think that they can get as good shots against Jacksonville State as they've been able to against some other recent opponents. I think that if Jacksonville State works the clock, gets good looks inside the arc, and looks for more threes while not giving up. Well, no, they need to guard the three better without giving up and without rotating incorrectly. What I've seen from Jacksonville State is if you make enough passes, you're going to have a defender who doesn't close out. And if that's the case, then UT Martin's going to stay in this game. 
If it doesn't, I think that with Jacksonville State's ability to convert to the free throw line through Darian Adams and Jalen Finch, I think that will be very beneficial. And I think that as long as they can limit their turnovers and not be the transition chaser, the transition leader instead, I think that they're going to figure it out. Listen, they've never been a favorite this big, but UT Martin, when – Bookmakers have lined them this way. They've anticipated that they're going to get smacked around. So I think that Jacksonville State's going to smack them around. And I think that they're going to take out their frustration on them. Keep Anthony Thomas off the free throw line. Keep Cam Holden focused on himself. And don't let a Johnny Kennedy freaking dominate you on the glass. Take it at him early. Saddle him with a couple fouls. And force the coaching staff to make a decision. You know, this is a team that by their makeup should be playing high tempo, fast games, but that's not what the coaching staff wants to do. They want to play slower, they want to play a little more methodical, and it's working out sometimes, but in the majority against upper tier uh, conference competition. It's just not going to work. So I think Jacksonville State's the spot. I'll bite the apple and uh, I'll take them full game. Minus 10 is the best number we can get you at Circa. A bunch of books have moved here to the 10 and a half. There is another 10, but it's not minus 110. Juiced a little too much. So we're going to give Max the minus 10 at minus 110 available at Circa Sports. And that wraps up Max's eight game card. 